Sound Spades, and welcome to part three in the Destroying the Electro Voice 664 video series. Now, part one, we use this microphone nicknamed the hammer as a hammer and knock some nails in with it. And part number two, we cooked this microphone, bringing it to almost 500 degrees. Yet that was not enough to stop this microphone from working now, was it? To give you an idea, this is the exact same Electro Voice 664 you have seen me attempt to destroy in the past two videos in this series. Now, aside from that, you can see all the damage that's been done to this microphone via the hammer, and aside from the fact that it withstand temperatures hotter than they would experience on planet Mercury, I felt for this video, it deserves to endure not such fierce punishment. As a matter of fact, I think a nice cooling bath is in order. Ha ha! Bet you thought I was going to be taking a bath with this microphone after seeing me take a shower with the DADS mic too. It's not going to happen, but what is going to happen is I'm going to take this microphone, put it inside of a container and then fill that container up with water. Now hopefully I'm making my point by filling this thing all, all the way up with water and it's going to get a nice cool relaxing bath all the way up to the very very top. Make this microphone nice and wet, cool water because you know obviously this is at the time I'm shooting this video we're approaching summer. I mean it's pretty warm outside. It was 92 today. And I don't want this microphone to get overly hot, especially as it's sitting here, just kind of relaxing and chilling out in my, you know, kitchen. But, uh, come on, take a nice little relaxing bath. Wait a minute. What? It's not cold enough. Poor microphone. Okay, then. Why don't we put you in the freezer for a bit, then? Why don't we do that? into the freezer it goes and we'll check in with it in a couple hours and see how it's doing all right here we go pulling this out let us see how well this did okay and right here is our iced up i mean i guess it's mostly water at this point no i guess it is pretty well in there Come on, get out of there. Now it's extremely cold and uh, it's got little ice bits all over it. So I guess I need to let it air out a bit or maybe put it in the clothes dryer since my wife is out of town. We've already established that heat's not going to hurt it so might as well It's a good thing it's a pretty rugged microphone too because if it wasn't... So this is the way the towel looks after I retrieved it from the tumble dryer. And I'd like to point out that one of the things of zip ties that I put around it did not make it. It came off. Now that might have had something to do with the fact that I put it on for the first time around 6.45 p.m. and I kept on recycling it over and over again until about 11.15 p.m. which is what time it is at the time of this video uh, while I'm shooting it. So. Without uh, really commenting on anything more, I'm not so sure that it's going to be completely dry. And the reason why is there's a couple of wet spots around here. And if I put my thumb up in here, uh, it's, it's wet up in here where my thumb is too. But I'm going to go ahead and use my, uh, my needle nose pliers to get into this. And we're going to see uh, exactly how good it lasted. Uh, or how good the uh, tumble dryer actually worked on it. Okay, let's cut it. There we go. All right. Doing this live. So that way you know that I'm not cheating something again. Because I was actually accused by a few people of cheating on my DDS Mic 2 video. 
which is why I did the follow-up video, which was, did I cheat in it? And as I get deeper and deeper into here, this is actually really wet right through here. So I don't know that this is going to be dry at all. Ah. You can see the, the markings right there, which indicate that it is indeed the same uh, wonderful. Oh, no. Oh, no. This right here is broken right here at the bottom. Ah. The connector has been broken. You can see it's distortish, distortion right there. So you mean to tell me this thing works great as a hammer, but it can't survive a tumble dryer inside of a towel? All right, let's see what I can do to bend this back into shape. Okay, so it looks like my uh, determination has paid off, but I'll tell you this, it has not been easy to bend this back into position. And I don't know if this is actually gonna screw on there again. It seems to be, it, it seems like this is not the regular strength of uh, everything else uh, that uh, we encountered here. Jeez, I don't even know what I'm saying here, sorry. Um, it, it appears that the little bitty ring around there was not as strong as the rest of this microphone. So I uh, regret to say that it's probably on about as much as it will go. It got on there a little bit. I mean, it's not going to pull out here, but uh, let's see now. If I were to turn on the switch, what is going to happen to this microphone when I flip the switch on? Oh. Whew. I mean, it sounds like there's something there. It sounds like there's something there, but in all honesty, I should probably give this a few days to, to recover from the moisture. And uh, cause it sounds to me like there's still something in there. So I'm gonna do my trick and stick this inside of a bag with a dehumidifier and we'll revisit this in a couple of days. But it didn't help any. So I decided to go through an entire restore procedure to see if that would. I started by bathing it in distilled water. Next, I set my oven to 250 degrees, put the microphone in the oven along with a glass of water and let it go for about an hour. After sitting in above boiling temperature for about an hour, I was expecting to see the water level drop more than it did. So I decided to increase the temperature to 300 degrees and let it go for another hour. After about half an hour, the water still wasn't boiling, so I increased it to 350. And since we've already established that heat doesn't hurt this microphone, I went ahead and left it in there another hour and 45 minutes. By the time I took the microphone out, there was still water on the inside, so at this point, I decided to go for broke. I took my portable dehumidifier, put it inside of an airtight storage container, and added the microphone inside and sealed it up for an entire week. By the end of the week, I could tell by the color on the dehumidifier that a lot of water had been extracted from the microphone. And so at this point, I figured if there's any chance of this microphone working, it's now or never. And surprisingly, it still works. Notice the damage from the very first test right there. As many of you have pointed out, it doesn't sound great anymore. But I mean, for a microphone that has been hammered, it's been grilled, it's been frozen, and then put in an oven, it's not sounding bad. And if I apply a little bit of EQ right here, we're going to see if it sounds better than some of the modern, cheapish microphones that you would see on the market. And keep in mind that I'm not done with it yet. Obviously, because the microphone is still alive, I have to run it through even more tests. So this right here is what the microphone sounds like if I apply a little bit of EQ to it and just try to curb off some of the nastiness still it's going to have some of that resonance that is embedded in it now because of all the damage it's gone through but it's still working so we're going to continue the test and let the truth be known if i knew how resilient it would be after i replaced this cable i probably wouldn't have done all these tests to begin with because i would actually like to hear the microphone at its best but regardless, we're going to do a part four in the near future so thank you for tuning in this episode of sound speeds and be sure to tune in the future for more damaging things that will do to microphones and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.